This is a cheap, shitty, rechargeable LED floodlight from China. It's a complete delight. We'll open that later. What's more important in this video is this one, which was uh, given to me by the local utility company, and it's a proper industrial-grade outdoor um, rechargeable LED floodlight. And this thing is impressive. It's actually, if when you compare it to the cheapy Chinese ones, it's so much brighter. And they said it wasn't taking a charge. And the first thing I did when I got it was, well, let's uh, take this. Let's take the feet off it so we can actually fit more of it under the camera. But the first thing I did was I got a, one of these jack leads because it's designed to charge from anything from about 12 to 24 volts. It's designed for sort of vehicular use. So let's get uh, that out of the way. I'll just drop that down the floor. So I plug this in. Where is it? Another notable feature, the uh, little bung that goes in here does actually seem to stay in. Uh, and a lot of the uh, cheapy ones, that just pops straight back out again. So I plugged it in. Stuck it on the power supply. I'll tell you what current it takes, in fact. Although it is fairly recently charged. So let's uh, just stick this on... Uh, put the power supply on, wind it up to about 12 volts. 12 volts. And when I connect it up, this little green and red dual colour LED starts flashing, alternating between green and red. And the current it shows is about 330 milliamps. That's because it's almost fully charged. And as I turn the voltage up to, say, 16 volts, it goes down to 240 milliamps. And that suggests it's actually got a converter inside its actual good got proper charging circuitry. So let's uh, open it, because that's what we want to do. I can also tell from the weight, this thing is heavy. I get the feeling that, uh, as opposed to the Chinese ones where you have like one or two cells, this one feels like it's got a lot more. I'm not even sure what type of cell it is in, inside this. So let's pop the lid off and have a wee gander. I'm expecting great things. Although this is a very standard case, um, it's, you know, you get so the contents vary dramatically. I mean, it's a, the case seems fairly consistent quality, but the circuitry and the batteries inside is what really sets these lights apart. It's also notable that the chip in the front, uh, the LED in the front has eight chips in it. So what we got... We've got a big circuit board. Oh, and that unplugs. That's quite handy. Right. Let's uh, let's uh, see what these chips are. I'm guessing one of them may be a microcontroller, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Or could it be a balancing chip? Let's get the circuit board out. Let's see what batteries. I can see there is quite a fat battery pack under here. Does it give the spec? That looks like a four cell battery pack under there. With two wires going down to it, so the balancing is on board, which is pretty common for these. The LED is connected, just it's just stuck into a three-way connector there which is a common enough technique. The rest is fairly typical. They really have crammed in, though. They've, to get the battery in, they must have pushed these switches in after the battery had been inserted. And likewise, the charging port. Everything looks fairly typical compared to the other type. Oh, look at the inductor in the back. Oh, two inductors. Ah, right. So let's uh, check out these chips, what they are. XL Semi XL four zero zero one E one and this one is XL Semi again XL six zero zero one E one the other chip oh there's no number on it the bastards why do they do that? Uh, so this chip here, I'm guessing... Oh, there's another position for another chip. That's interesting. I wonder if they've allowed for balancing circuitry to be on here as well. And another one. Could it be this is designed for multiple applications? 
Okay, well let's do some uh, tests with a thermal imaging camera and see what each of these chips does. So I'll just boot up the FLIR. I'll plug the battery pack back, in fact, you know what, I'll plug it on back on and we'll power it up and we'll see which of those chips is getting hot when it's actually running the LED because that will give an indication as to what's driving the LED. I get the feeling that one of these will be uh, controlling the charging of the battery and I'm guessing it's probably going to be from the layout of the pins it's going to be this one controls the charging of the battery um, and then this one will probably be driving via this big inductor it will be driving the LED and this is just a generic control I'm guessing then odd uh, so let's uh, turn this on so it's actually putting out tons of light it is very bright it's very good and let's get the thermal imaging camera and we'll see which of these chips is getting hot. Oh, that instantly shows what chip's getting hot. This one here, this is the output circuitry then. This is driving that LED. And the rest of the circuit board is stone cold. Okay, so I'm just going to put my... This is what... When you can't really place something under the thermal imaging camera, if you just put your finger or a screwdriver to block the chip to block the source of heat, like this. Then that tells you what it is. And it's a, a mixture, it's the chip here and the diode next to it. Okay, so now let's uh, ascertain if this is the charging one. By turning that off, bring in my charging lead, and we'll see if it's this chip that gets hot now. So on goes the power supply again. Output on about 13 volts, it's drawing 400 milliamps, oh instantly, the chip that's getting hot is, yeah, these diodes and this integrated circuit are now getting hot. So that does indicate that they are controlling that side of things. Bit of residual heat from that, but it's only residual heat and uh, this is stone cold. That is... Odd. I'm guessing this must be a microcontroller for some reason, or a dedicated charge control chip. You'd have thought there'd be built-in protection in the battery pack itself, particularly given it's got two leads going down there. But this thing looks pretty chunky. This uh, looks like a robust and fairly expensive unit. Who's it actually made by? It's made by, well, it's sold. Economical. Flood it myfloodit.com Okay. Interestingly, it says 7.4 volts, 4.4 amp hour. Power 10 watt. I wonder what the actual power output is. Is the output power 10 watts? Uh, can we get an indication on the... What's the best way to measure that? Um... I'm guessing we could see what power is being drawn from the battery, the lithium cell. If I put a little clamp meter around it, let's pull that wire out there and clamp that. So I'll bring in a little DC clamp meter. We'll turn it to current. Select DC. <coughs> Null it out, and I'm guessing the voltage across that LED, I'll measure the voltage across the LED as well. Let's say uh, 20 volts is ideal. Let's uh, put that there so we can see all these readouts. I'll just null that again because I've moved it. Okay, let's turn that on and see what we get. From the battery, it's pulling about an amp, and the battery voltage is about, that's, I, I get the feeling it has been set to draw, I'm not 100% sure there, how they're doing this. Uh, the battery voltage is, whoop, let's get a good connection here, 
Oh, that's the LED voltage. That's not what I want. It, oh, you know what? That is interesting that it's putting about 12 volts out to that LED. That's quite unusual. Okay. Um, the battery voltage, though. Let's see if I can probe here without shorting something out dramatically. Battery voltage is... No, I'm just being careful not to short the battery out here. That would not be good. About 8 volts. So 8 volts, 1 amp, that's about 8 watts. The thing is actually, that's just ignoring the losses in the power supply. That's quite impressive then. That is a good output. And if it's regulating the current through the LED with that switchboard uh, supply, that will be drawing that pretty much. That will be putting full power out right to the end when it does just cut off. It sounds like uh, it's going to be, remain at full intensity, unlike the cheapy Chinese eBay ones, well, they're all probably from China ultimately, that uh, gradually reduced in intensity as the battery goes down because all they're using is a resistor. That's very nice. Another thing worth noting here is that they have rated it properly. Um, it's got four cells, but they're wired uh, as two in parallel and two in series, so it gives a combined voltage of 7.4 volts, and they're rating it 4.4 amp hour, so they're using 2.2 amp hour cells, but whereas the Chinese would cheat on eBay, I see, I keep, I'm saying the Chinese again, it's not necessarily the Chinese are doing that, but the Chinese eBay listings tend to be a bit notorious for this, Whereas uh, when you have the amp hour rating of battery, it's whatever amp hour it can supply at the battery's voltage. So in this case, the voltage is about 7.2 volts on average because it's two sets in series. So they've uh, taken the uh, combined the fact there's two at 2.2 amp hour providing uh, the. Th What's the best way to put this? There's two. 2.2 ampere in parallel, but then in series. So effectively it is 7 volts at uh, the 4.4 ampere, but the Chinese would cheat. They'd call this an 8.8 .8 ampere battery because they just say 1, 2, 3, 4 cells putting out uh, the 2.2 ampere each and they just add them all up. It's just a little trick to cheat the ratings on, on the eBay listings. But this is nice. It's very nice. And I shall, uh, fi well, it, it's fixed. It just needs a charger. And uh, I'll see if they want it back then, because uh, there's nothing really majorly wrong with it. I'm looking at the big wires there. That must be the inductor. Look at the huge wires coming through onto that side with the big blobby solder joints in the vicinity. Yeah, this is nice. That's how a proper light should be made. Um, but having said that, uh, it's probably going to cost a lot more than the generic Chinese uh, eBay ones. But the Chinese eBay ones will be... Oh, you know what? Screw it. Let's open a cheap Chinese eBay one right now. <coughs> so here is the, the arch nemesis. This is the crappy one. I can tell already it's so light. And it comes with a charging lead. And a charger. It comes with two chargers. It comes with this, this charger and a USB charging lead. And it says in the back, uh, 7.4 volt, 2.2 amp hour. And that to me would normally say there's two cells in series with uh, a rating of 2.2 amp hour to each to actually give the combined the higher voltage. And when you charge this, the charger itself... Although it's a sort of standard USB output in this, it's got that sort of dual colour LED thing going on that if you put it on to charge and it is drawing current, uh, the red LED lights, and then when this stops drawing current, I'm guessing there's just a protection chip that cuts off inside, then this will uh, go green. Uh, and I've noticed that if you plug this into different uh, sources, it, it really it just pulls the current. It pulls the voltage down to... Well, let's see what it pulls the voltage down to. Uh, I shall plug this little thing in here and if you can't see it I'll just read what it says so at the moment it's showing an open circuit of 5.5 volts when I plug this in it goes down to about 4.6 volts and it draws 450 milliamps so it's pulling the voltage down the output of that if I then plug this into say for instance a good beefy power supply like this uh, one here which is putting out 5.1 volts. Now, it's holding the voltage. It's putting, it's just dropped slightly. It's down to about 5.02, but it's now putting about 850 milliamps. So I don't think there's any really major current limiting going on in there. I think they may be doing that trick where, actually, you know, is it 
boosting the voltage up. Let's open it. Let's open it and take a look inside. I'm very suspicious this is not 7.4 volts. Where's a suitable screwdriver? I had a suitable screwdriver. I've put that suitable screwdriver down and misplaced it. There it is. Let's not hold our breaths for this because uh, it wasn't a terribly expensive one. And to be fair, I have tested it. And it ran for the full four hours. It reduced in intensity over time, suggesting that it's just a resistor. And it did come out at about 2.097 amp hour. So it is at least about a two amp hour cell in this. Or pair of cells. This one has a lot of LEDs uh, in the front of it. I'll get the back off first and then we can take a look at the front. I already popped the front off the posh one. There's nothing under the cover other than the LED. It's just the LED in its own. It's also notable that the back in this one is huge compared to that one. It's uh, much bigger. And you think, oh, it must be stuffed with batteries then. I'm not holding my breath. The other ones are usually super simple inside. Oh, it's so light. Oh, the cheats. It's one cell just stuck onto the back. There's not even any charge control circuitry. It really is just relying on the limiting of the USB lead to charge that. And it will have, I can see it actually, it's got a little protection circuit board just basically under the heat shrink on the side of the cell. Oh, that is so cheap. That is so tacky. So that means there must be a resistor under here. Look at the, there is a label on that, but uh, yeah, it says 2.2 amp hour, 3.7 volts. Not really branded as such, you wouldn't really expect that. This one is quite interesting. It's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 chips in it, which is quite interesting. But I'm guessing they'll just all be in parallel. So let's pop the front off this, and this time I'm expecting underneath to see a resistor to limit the current through the LED. And that does offer a certain degree of hackability. It also means that as the uh, battery runs down, the LED does get dimmer, but you get a longer run time without suddenly losing it too quickly. With that one, when it reaches the end of a uh, charge, it just cuts off. I don't think there's any warning. I don't think there's any warning. Maybe there is. I should give that a full discharge and see if it at least does something like blinking the light to warn you it's going to go off. Or maybe it uh, might reduce the intensity. I shall check that out. Given that it's designed, this one is used by power workers working on high voltage lines that you wouldn't really want it to go out suddenly. That would be annoying. So very similar construction to them all. Four screws holding the reflection, which is quite nice. A lot of them cheat and just have two. Which, you know, to be fair, that's fine. It holds it in place. I think the use of the square 10 watt, 10 watt LED chip in these is really just for show. They could use, given the power they're running these at, they could actually run them at much lower power. They could use a 3 watt chip. This is not coming out. There we go. Oh, it's not even a standard chip, it's just the sort of uh, cob with a little dam around it on a circuit board. And two sheared screws by the look of it, unless those are indents. No, they look like sheared screws. I think they've had a bad time putting this guy. Oh, and a 1.2 ohm resistor. That's what's limiting the current. So this does offer the opportunity that if you wanted to change this to run for a longer time at lower power, you can change that resistor value. Or you could stuff the back absolutely full of batteries. Lots of options for hacking these. They're worth it just the case alone. Uh, this could be replaced, given it's not running at very high current. Uh, what is the current it's running at? We can work that out by measuring across that resistor. Can we actually get access to that? Hold on. I shall improvise. We shall do ex scientific experiments here. We'll measure the voltage across the resistor from the switch, which goes to the resistor and then to the LED and we can work out what current this is actually running at. So let's start by, yeah, let's turn it on. Swamp out. I guess it's going to be quite a low voltage dropped across that. We'll leave it at a 20 volt setting. And I'm going to connect the 
positive onto the positive that's feeding down from here and then onto the other side of that resistor, it's showing 0.87 volts. Let's work that out. I equals V, 0.87 volts, divided by the value of that resistor, which is 1.2 ohms. The current flowing is about 700 milliamps. And the voltage across that is going to be about 3 volts. Let's measure the voltage across that. It's much easier to look into this one than it was the other one. It's about 3.02 volts. So let's just say 3 volts. So that's 0.72 amps times the 3 volts of the LED. It's 2 watts. It's putting out so a fraction of the power of that one. Although having said that, in a dark room, they didn't look bad. It was very obvious that that one was a lot brighter. The industrial one was a lot brighter. But this one still puts out a useful amount of light. It also suggests that for that rating, you could just use a standard, uh, I'll turn this off, Luxian starish style uh, LED, you know, things like these. Uh, and you could actually put one of these in because it wouldn't be pushing a 3 watt LED to be putting out that same amount of power. And uh, it gives you options as well in there. Uh, but I think this is just for show to make it look like a the high power LED. But yes, uh, this one is very good quality. I'm guessing it's quite expensive. I don't know the cost of that particular unit. Uh, this one was a cheapo. It shows. It's kind of empty, but it still works, and it is at least. It's a case that you can use for other things, but this one is quite nice. Still intrigued as what that chip's for. It's not immediately obvious, and there's an awful lot of circuitry on here, and really huge amount of circuitry. I think I'll uh, put this on test. I'll let it run down, see if it gives any warnings when it's about to go off.